Adam, is yours? Bonjour. It is wonderful to be there and I thanks organizers for the possibility to participate and get to know your great company. I am Violeta and I come from Lithuania. I am working at the Vilnius Nature Research Centre at the Laboratory of Quaternary Research. And history is uh, only one of my free time activities. And as you know, we don't have more free time. <laughs> but last two years, uh, the normal work and researches were limited, and therefore I, I used uh, this time for history. And I spend a lot of time in various archives. Um, my presentation is very close to with my colleague, Eugenia. Uh, and we both are talking about um, first professional geologist of Lithuania, Duke Antanas Gedraitis, about his life and his uh, work. <clears throat> in the history of science in Lithuania and neighboring countries, Gedraitis was the first who compiled a geological map by international standards. He understood quaternary deposits and took a, a courageous stance for that time in maintaining that the region area was uh, crowd, uh, covered by two or three glaciations. The professional achievements of geologist Antanas Gedraitis are known and they are evidenced by his detailed investigations, reports and publications in German, Polish and Russian languages. Uh, so, Antanas Gedraitis comes uh, from the famous family of dukes. He was born in 1848 in Karavis Manor near Vilnius after the, the division, uh, division of uh, Karavis Manor in 1851. Uh, Edmundas Gedraitis, his father, inherited the Antanavas farm estate where Antanas Gedraitis grew up. Today, we only have the remains of these buildings. Um, and this is a um, certificate of uh, Antanas Gedaitis' birth, uh, which I found in Central Archive of Lithuania. His father was the governor secretary Edmundas Karolis and mother Ludvika Shunovichuti. Gedaitis uh, died in uh, 1909 in Vilnius and he left his wife. Elena, son Santana, San Jonas, and daughter Sona, Ludvika, and Elena. With the permission of the governor of Vilnius, he was buried in Karvis Cemetery, and uh, you can see the certificate and the tomb of Gedraichi family and uh, the Karvis church too. In 1867, <clears throat> Antanas Gedraitis graduated from the Vilnius First Boys Gymnasium, and from 1872 to 76, he studied at the Freiburg Mining Academy in Germany. But after he decided to return to Lithuania and continued his studies at Dorpat, Tartu University in Estonia. In 1877, Gedraitis graduated this um, university after passing additional examinations and preparing the final work. Uh, it in English named for diagnostic knowledge of Northwestern provinces. And he was awarded the degree of candidate of mineral mineralogy. <clears throat> After receiving an order from the uh, St. Petersburg Mineral Society in 1877-78, Antanas Gedraitis explored the western parts of the Russian Empire, uh, Vilnius, Kaunas, Grodno, Governotes, Northern Poland, but did not finish uh, this works, uh, block of topographical material. From 1879 to 1883, he worked at Turkmenistan. 
uh, by order to the Russian Geological Committee, he continued this works in 1883-87 and compiled a geological map. Geraitis was the pioneer of professional geological, uh, geolog geological cartography in Lithuania and neighboring countries too, and was the first who compiled a geological map of a large region and understood well the properties of quaternary deposits. The geological map created by Antanas Geraitis was based on conventional legend, a ratified stratigraphic charts, and a sufficient number of observation required um, for such mapping. However, <clears throat> the summary work with the map uh, was uh, printed only in 1895. Uh, the objects um, uh, of his investigations were relief, outcrop springs, boreholes, and mines. Among the explored outcrops mentioned should be made of Grodno outcrop by Namunas River. Uh, Belarus, Pamirke outcrop of Merkis River, South Lithuania, Nyamunaitis outcrop of Nyamunas River, River South Lithuania, Rokai outcrop by the Yese River, South Lusi uh, Middle Lithuania, Plikakalnis outcrop by Neris River, East Lithuania, Vilnius City, and Bekesh Hill outcrop by Vilnia River, uh, East Lithuania, Vilnius City, and of course, many other outcrops, as well as drinking water springs and the first artesian uh, borehole in Vilnius. These objects have undergone different development. Some outcrops significant for quaternary geology have been reduced and overgrown with trees or entered into the cultural heritage system as they turned into stratigraphical <coughs> standards. Uh, Gedraitis um, <clears throat> investigate the surroundings of Grodno, uh, Belarus, and described the chalk outcrop near the Nyamunas River. The object uh, he explored turned into the large-scale industrial quarry, but the intensive exploitation of chalk began only after Second World War, War and um, Continue, continue to this day. Today, the exploit chalk worries of Grodno are managed, and a part of them are adapted for recreation. Antanas Gedraitis found chalk blocks in South Lithuania too, at the outcrops of Merkis River near the village Pamirke and Akmenis, but um, there the chalk mining was not realized. The project uh, to exploit the chalk near Pamirke was stopped by the First World War. Gedraitis' <clears throat> uh, conclusion about its uh, uh, subsidence not in situ later was uh, confirmed that, is, uh, that it is glacier dislocation. Interestingly, that their chalk uh, flints were already exploited in prehistoric time too, and you can see three mining uh, Ejerinas, Margonis, and uh, uh, Titnas Lake that we found uh, uh, when we have a big project, the Stone Age in South Lithuania, uh, 20 years ago. <clears throat> One of the most interesting outcrop in Lithuania is Nemunaitis, uh, South Lithuania, Alitus district. This is limestone turf outcrop of Nemunas River. Uh, limestone turf is sediment of mineral springs formed during the Holocene time. During the research, Antanas Gadratis discovered about 11 mineral water springs and near this outcrop, but in this time, we have remains only one today. During the time of Antanas Gadratis and until 1958, when the Kaunas 
hydroelectric power was built, there were a lot of outcrops in the Yesa River Valley, Middle Lithuania. Not only a few, <clears throat> now only a few outcrops uh, remains which are of great importance for Upper Lithuanian stratigraphy. One of them is the Rokai outcrop, and you can see uh, this outcrop in. Uh, in uh, 1913s and now. Um, <clears throat> in uh, 1898, Gedraitis remained a description of this outcrop uh, and the rock of uh, Cretaceous period are also recorded at the level of the river now. And you can see there the structure of upper Pleistocene uh, of mid middle and upper Pleistocene deposit in the valley of Yesa River at Rokai locality. And uh, <clears throat> the current studies of this outcrop, uh, lithological, petrographical, palynological, chronological, allowed us to uh, uh, substantiated the stratigraphy of the upper places in, in Lithuania. And this is Plikakalnis outcrop, Neris River, Vilnius city. And uh, this is not painting, this is picture uh, from Yaresevich, Klutinska, 1938 that we found in the book um, Wojtechowski. <clears throat> uh, Gedraitis described uh, it in detail and a cross section of this outcrop can be um, provided in, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in food. This outcrop is still important for Pleistocene stratigraphy until research. Also, it is now heavily, heavily overgrown, difficult to access and belongs to the landscape reserve. In the section of the outcrop, we can see two glacial deposits of two glaciations. And below them, 150 foot thick layer of sand which are very characteristic to Vilnius city and found in the other outcrops, for example, in the Bekesh Hill outcrop too. And you can see the pictures from 1969 and uh, nine and nowadays. This is a um, um, painting of uh, Smolkovsky, and you can see this outcrop on the right side. Uh, and maybe I said that Bekesh, uh, Bekesh Hill is a widely known uh, natural and cultural object that has been immortalized in the art. And this is Bekesh Hill with the tower about I now said about it. Uh, Bekesh Hill is um, a little destroyed by little by little destroyed by erosion, and uh, it is known that in 1838 and 1843 it was strongly washed, and uh, um, the strange name Bekesh. Uh, named after Hungarian Gaspar Bekes, who was a military commander of Stepan Bator time, and he was buried on the hill because he was um, uh, uh, and uh, therefore refused admittance to the city cemeteries. His grave uh, was marked by an octagonal tower, and Lithuanian are planning to cooperate with the embassy um, of Hungary to restore this memory in the park. And as I said, it is um, 
very uh, known and in in art too. And you can see their famous Lithuania painter Rusetskas work and uh, Bekash Hill is the central part. <clears throat> Currently, <clears throat> the outcrop of Bekash Hill is covered with trees and is not um, accessible for direct investigations. The hill itself itself as a mound belongs to the cultural reserve of Vilnius castles. Among the objects of Gedraitis research we were the springs, including the Vingri and Musinieri springs in the village too. This, uh, <clears throat> the first evidence uh, about the, the use of spring water for water supply in Vilnius goes back to 1501 when Alexander, the great Duke of Lusiania, gave as a present to the Dominican monks a plot of land and they were uh, the property of the monks. In 1536, uh, we uh, have a writ of Grand Duke of Lusiania, Gigimantas Augustas, confirms the transfer of Bingre Springs belonging to the Dominican monks to Vilnius City. And you can see the oldest water station of Vilnius, uh, Vingri Spring. Uh, currently, the place of Vingri Springs, which is being maintained and uh, equipped, is intended to the recreation of the people of Vilnius. <clears throat> In 1859, uh, the plan of the Ujupis district of Vilnius was drawn up. In 1818s, it makes the Missionary Springs a reservoir and the public water. For several hundred years, the people of Vilnius used the water of Vingri and Missionary Springs from the water sedimentary aquifer. Today is the place of Missionary. <clears throat> Springs is a place for people to walk and rest. Mm, however, <clears throat> Vilnius uh, uh, grew up uh, and developed, and according to the Antanas Gedraitis, already at the end of 19th century, underground water was uh, polluted just to widespread constructions. As a result, artesian wells were designed and um, the city first watering place began to operate in the Bernardine Garden, which is located near the Vilna River in front of Bekash Hill. Currently, Vilnius used underground water from uh, 14 well equipped water bodies. At the end of 19th century, the springs were replaced by drilling artesian wells, one of which was initiated and described by Antanas Gedraitis in 1883 and it named Pahulanka waterhole in Vilnius. It was equipped for the needs of the Tsarist Russia army and it was the first waterhole in Vilnius that reached the deep layers of the earth, Devonian rocks. Uh, and um, <clears throat> sinking under the cover of glacial deposits. Good groundwater was expected, but unfortunately, the hopes did not come through. The water from Devonian strata was highly mineralized and was therefore deemed uh, unsuitable for drinking, and this delayed and further attempts to find good quality drinking water in the Devonian strata for almost 30 years. But the geological data of this borehole entered it to gold fund of Lithuanian geology. Based on this data, uh, the creators of geological science, Gedraitis, then Professor Yodele, Professor Kavetskas, Professors Delinkevich's 
explained the irregularities of the geological structure of Earth, the eastern part of Lusiania, and the history of geological development. During the Soviet time, the about ground drilling equipment was dismantled, the mouth of the borehole was sealed, and the floor of the building was uh, concreted, and today the octagonal tower of the red and yellow brings has been left a cultural, a cultural heritage object. And the, another um, interesting object studied by Antanas Gedraitis is Venta Dubisa Channel. After the, uh, the division of the Republic of both uh, nations, Lithuania fell into the uh, clutches of the Russian Empire, which sought to strengthen in influence in international trade of and control of the ports. Uh, in Lithuania, we have only one waterway to Baltic Sea, and it is Nemunas River. But at that time, the mouth of Nemunas River was controlled by Prussia. Therefore, <clears throat> in Russia, the idea arose to connect Nemunas River Basin with the Baltic uh, Sea and Black Sea. And in uh, in and one of uh, the channels was the Venta Dubisa channel, uh, which began to dug in 1824. However, in 1831, a rebellion broke out in Lithuania and the work stopped. Many years later, <clears throat> Gedraitis researched the abandoned channel and paid a lot of attention to the possibilities to use Speed from the drainage swamp. Channel mining works resumed in the 20th century, but the outbreak of the First World War put an end to them. Currently, we can see the remains of the channel and several of <clears throat> It is a small part of uh, the investigations of Antanas Gedraitis as ne at next year we are planning the international conference and uh, it will be dedicated to anniversary of 1075 years of Antanas Gedraitis. Maybe it will be interesting for you so you can contact and for more information with the chairman of organizing committee Jonas Atkunas or the member of Inhigeo, Valentinas Baltrunas. And I thank you for your attention and we wish for you success and hope we meet each other in future, maybe in Lithuania too. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? I have one question before yourself? my presentation. You have one question Maybe for yourself? No. Uh, 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 after Eugenia's presentation, mm -hmm. we have a question about Gadraitis, and I. Uh, it's um, why Antanas Gadraitis' name uh, spell it differently. Now I go to first slide. You can see Antanas Karolis Gedroitis, Antoni Gedroitz, Gedroitz. Uh, in <laughs> it is easy to explain if you know Lusaina history. As you know, Lusaina a long time was occupied, and there were two big rebellions in 1831 and 1863. After that, Lusania language was prohibited. Schools, university, Catholic, uh, Catholic churches were closed and educated people were sent to Siberia. And those who um, uh, want to continue their researches and publish their books, their works, they had to do it in 
other languages, Russian, Polish, German, oh, which is easy to explain why uh, family is spelled differently. Okay, <laughs> thank you for this precision. Is there a question? <laughs> 